So one of the trickiest things about coaching beginning discus throwers is transitioning from the middle to the finish. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a couple of big things that make it hard, how to fix them, so check it out. What's up guys, it's Eric Johnson from Air Tate Throws Nation. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how do we move into the power position. Now, if you looked at our last video on how do we coach the discus throw for beginners, this is a kind of continuation. This is part two. We're gonna do a three video series on this and we'll do it for each event for the discus, the glide shot, and the rotational shot. Now, one of the things we talked about when we are here in the discus, the next phase that gets really tricky is understanding when we're in the middle of the circle, how do we set up the throw and move into the power position that we just discussed. Now, if you're brand new to throwing, we just talked in the last video, some basic things, that heel toe position. We talked about the basics of setting up on top of the power leg, the power position leg, right? The delivery leg and being able to turn it. You'll notice that if I'm not stacked, believe it or not, this simple action of keeping everything, and I call it a stack, just like Legos. One Lego on top of the other, we put four or five or six together that go straight up. Foot, knee, hip, pec. How do I get all that on a line? One of the things we talk about this is a simple thing. You see a lot of people and they do this and that can create the stack, but I see a lot of people who do this and then the kids aren't carrying that discus right like we talked about in the first video. And then what happens? They get here, they do this thing, they bend at the waist, the hips are going back, they're here, and now they're in this position and they're coming through and they're doing this type of a throw because they didn't load correctly. So one of the things we talked about is how do we turn, there's what we call a vertical line, this is your axis. Now, if I stand in kind of a squat position, right? You see me here. You see how this bands on a slight angle. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the foot, the knee, the hip, and the chest, right? So you're gonna see how I have all this on a straight angle at this point. So now I'm here, you see everything this way, and what we call, we call it in our system, just a simple drill, an elevator drop. What does an elevator do? It drops straight down. We wanna drop into our legs like this. Now watch what I can do. I can turn this side. Notice how that all turns really easily. Notice if I set up incorrectly. If I bend into a stand throw, my hips no longer on this line. When I do this, look at how everything shifts. Now I'm trying to throw. Well, how are you ever gonna teach your athletes to turn through? So what do a lot of athletes do when they get in this position and they're taught incorrectly or they're doing it wrong? Because it's unnatural. So it's okay, they need to understand this, is un this isn't a natural thing, but they need to learn how to do it correctly. And then over time, very quickly, if you're doing it correctly, the right motion starts to develop. So when we, like, as I was saying, if I get here and I start to shift, right, I can't ever get this hip through. I'm never gonna turn this hip through. So what are they learning to do? They're learning to pull, and you're gonna see a lot of this, and sometimes you see kids who do this. They throw and they kind of spin around because the upper body is pulling them off this leg. They have to learn how to stay on top, turn this, and turn through. And that's how you start teaching the reverse, which again is not exactly basics 101. That's something you wanna incorporate after just a couple of weeks, especially if you got a brand new beginning thrower. But if you can do these sorts of things, you set that stack, right? Everything's here. You set an angle, we drop into the position, and we learn how to turn, and the lower body turns the upper body. When we're here, I turn this, I get to a point, right, my lower body's turning, I'd hit that block, I'd keep twisting this through, and then I would see that, and you'd see how that would bring me a motion of taking the body around and into the throw. That's what's really important. So, when we're moving into this position, right, we're gonna set up. So now we would go through some basic drills. Now we'll give you one of the drills from our program. And remember, in our system, we just covered again, some five, six review. This is what we call pillar three. From here, we're moving pillar three into the middle. In the air is pillar four. Clearly I can't demonstrate being in the air. So you'll notice from this camera where my hips are, where my weight's at. So what I'm gonna do is squat and turn. And you're gonna see me push here. I'm gonna keep my head with my chest and I'm gonna push off this leg, I'm gonna go straight down and turn, and now I'm into that same position, and all I've gotta do is have the athlete turn here. So many people will do drills and they'll say, you know, turn and put the leg down. If you see a video doing that, I'm gonna highly advise you not to watch that video anymore. You do not do this in a throw. 
And there are a lot of things out there telling you, get your foot down fast. That's not how it works. What you want to have your athletes do is squat, turn, and open this, as we talked about, down the left sector line. Notice where my feet are, and now I can twist through. You've got to get your athletes to learn how to do this. It's lower body moves the upper body. It goes without saying that if you have your athletes and you're brand new and you're trying to get to this transition, you're going to have them learn how to step in. What do a lot of athletes do? They step in and everything is turning. So they're trying to rotate everything. There's no separation. You have to allow the lower body to move ahead of the upper body. Now you're starting to create that torque, that separation, so we can get here and land into the power position. Notice how I'm open. Notice that I'm pretty stacked up. And now I'm going to be able to turn through. So how do you get your athletes to do this? They've got to be holding that discus right. So this is your next step. So your next step is we would go again inside our program. We show you how pillar three drills, pillar four drills, and how we put together those drills in our throwing progressions. That's our chain reaction and how we set alignment, set the chain reaction, and then we put together all the pieces that we're working and we flow into it. So we would set up the position properly. A lot of people you're gonna see videos where they say stack up on here. We have some athletes who are correcting. They're learning to turn and they turn here, but what do they do? They do this every time because they're turning the upper body too much. They have the right kind of idea, but it's not an optimal thing. And it's something that's gonna give them a certain amount of success and then create a ceiling, which is something you definitely want to, don't wanna do. So again, if you're a beginning coach, what's the key thing that's gonna screw everything up? The hand position and carrying the discus. So one of the things we talked about inside our system, we have another video here on YouTube talking about adding extra 20 feet, holding the discus with the two fingers so that they feel how to do this and they get feel how to be comfortable. So when they're setting up here and that discus can be in the right position, now I'm gonna grip it because I don't want it coming out of my hand and this would be a really important tip. Don't let your athletes do walkthroughs unless they're holding the discus like this, but hold the discus like this, don't hold it like this and don't cup it. Really important. A lot of times you'll have your athletes walk through and they're gonna hold their arm like this and they're gonna hold the discus. They're learning wrong, don't do that. You wanna have this, have them keep extended so that they feel how to set up the position, feel how the lower body moves the upper body and you're going to notice how I keep the discus here and the reason we're going to do that when we do walkthroughs is we don't want the discus coming out we don't want to be hitting athletes we don't want it slipping out you know I've seen too many issues where that's been a big problem so remember you the key thing is when you set up here you want your weight to simulate going from the left to the right and not moving this have your chest facing the direction of throw have your athletes squat down and turn into this position and turn the right leg through and then just guide the discus. So if I'm throwing and I'm a new thrower, what are they gonna a lot of them do? They're gonna do this kind of thing. They're gonna do this kind of thing. You're gonna do orbit's gonna be off and we're gonna address that for our members. Remember inside the system, we talk about why all those things are happening and how we create prescriptions to avoid all that. So when you guys are here, keep everything level, push, pull this leg behind, open it up, and now your athletes are learning how to turn into the throw. That would be a great day one for your beginners to have the beginning video. If you watch the previous video on stand throw position, that's pillar five, six, and then this is pillar three, four, and then the next video we'll talk about will include pillar one and two and putting together a full throw. And again, making sure that you're spending that time like we discussed in the last video, bowls, grass cutters, tosses, you know, all these different things to get better at controlling the discus. And like we said before, be sure to check out our video, Extra 20 Feet, on how to hold the discus. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. You're just gonna keep things simple. Make sure that the athlete is comfortable carrying the discus. For some athletes, they're gonna pick it up. That are gonna be your kids that excel faster. For some of your athletes, it's gonna take weeks. But be diligent, continue with those fundamentals and make that a priority so that they can improve. Otherwise, you're going past things too quickly and they're gonna develop bad habits that are gonna to lead to bad technical foundation. And once a bad foundation's set, you can't build on it. Or if you know how it would work, if we built a really big building on a really poor foundation, it's gonna fall down real quick and it's gonna have a limit. We don't wanna put limits on our throwers. We wanna develop really key fundamentals. 
Remember the key things we talked about in the first video, separation, orbit, radius, right? Block leg, delivery leg, block arm. We want to still be conscious of all that. So when we're in this position, now we have this leg. The block leg is a sprint and then it's down into a block. So you're going to be initiating that movement with that block leg. Pushing, squatting, turning, landing, and then turning the delivery leg through into the finish. Really simple. The goal initially, put some cones out, moderate distance, have the athlete simply focus on directing and controlling the discus. That's more important than anything. When they learn how to control the discus, they're going to develop technically much faster. Okay, guys, so hopefully you like that. Again, if you're a member, log in. We're going to go through some specific, talk about specific pillar drills and throwing progressions and specific problems that you'll see and how to address those. And for those of you that are not, we'd love to see you on the inside, but hopefully this video helps. If it did, be sure to give us a comment, let us know how it's helped, and be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you like the video, tell us about what else you'd like to see, and we will see you guys on the next video. Take care.